When the attack on October 7th in Israel happened from Hamas, what was your reaction to that? Let's wait and see what happened. Well, it was my first reaction. My second reaction was, how the hell did the Israelis not know this was going to happen? And I'm still a little bit down that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't didn't the Israeli army in those 11, 10 or 11 camps hear the bangs when they blew up whatever they had to blow up to get across the border? Mm -hmm. There's something very fishy about that. Last week, Glenn Greenwald hosted Pink Floyd's Roger Waters on his Rumble show system update. And during the context of that conversation, Waters questioned whether Hamas even conducted a terrorist attack. Waters floated the theory that Hamas's deadly terrorist attack on October 7th, which killed over 1,400 Israelis, according to the Israeli government, was actually a false flag operation. Let's watch more of what he has to say and then obviously give you the reality. What we do know is whether it was a false flag operation or not, or whatever, or whatever happened, and whatever story we're going to get to, and we we don't know if we will ever get much of a real story. It's very it's always hard to tell what actually happened. They're calling it their 9/11. What the hell happened on the American 9/11? Nobody knows. The, oh, clearly, the official narrative has huge holes in it. So. Look, I can understand why there are so many questions in regard to the IDF and how it took them six hours to respond to Hamas's terrorist attack. But unfortunately, um, the answer is pretty easy once you look into what happened, right? So Netanyahu had been so hyper focused on the West Bank and protecting the settlers who had built illegal settlements in the West Bank. That the IDF, all of the attention of the IDF was there in that in that area, not at the border with the Gaza Strip. And so once the terrorist attacks happened, it took a long time for IDF soldiers to get to them. They were too busy providing protection for settlers, Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank as they were helping them you know, guard their illegal settlements. So that was what was going on. I mean, we have some answers, we could talk about it. I'm actually surprised that. He doesn't know that and he's not talking about the failure of the Israeli government. Yeah, so I think guys like this are not helpful because we're trying to bring attention to the plight of the people of Gaza who are being slaughtered right now. And so for the average layman and people in media, they look at Roger Waters and they think, oh, he's on the left and he's criticizing Israel. So he must be part of the critique of Israel. And so we'll judge the critique based on what he says. You know, is that exclusive? No, of course not. But is it partially that? Yes, and it makes the critique easier to dismiss mm -hmm. when you say crackpot things like it's a false flag operation. Now, there's 1,400 dead Israelis. I think Bibi Netanyahu is a monster, but there's no way that the rest of the IDF and the Israeli government, even if Netanyahu was that monstrous, which I don't think he would do to his own Israeli citizens. But even if you thought, okay, Netanyahu is willing to kill anybody, okay? How is he gonna get everybody else to, to, to participate and then kill fellow Israelis? It's inconceivable, totally, utterly inconceivable, right? So, and then the idea that, that Hamas only killed Israeli soldiers but left all the Israeli citizens alone. Come on. Absurd, absurd. So this doesn't help anyone. All you're doing is muddying the waters, if you will. Uh, and 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 kind of putting a stain on the legitimate critique of the Israeli government. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And this has been the most frustrating thing because there are good, honest actors on the left. Okay, I, I think you know Crystal Ball has been doing a great job with this story. Kyle Kalinsky has been doing a good job with the story, and I mention them because they don't make any you know. Uh, exception when it comes to civilians on the Israeli side, okay? Innocent civilians should be protected, should never be targeted. And it, what Hamas did was absolutely brutal, disgusting, and they should be brought to justice. And I hate when you have the Roger Waters types who say this nonsense trash garbage, because then well meaning individuals who are engaging in accurate critique of Israel's response to what Hamas did. Get lumped in with lunatics who seem to continuously make these points that devalue the lives of Israeli civilians. I do not agree with any of that. 
Okay, and I do not agree with what Roger Waters says in the next clip. So let's watch that and we'll talk about it. Do you think what Hamas did on October 7th can be justified? Well, we don't, A, we don't know what they did do, but do, was it justified for them to resist the occupation? Yeah, but it, again, it's what you said, it's the Geneva Conventions. They are absolutely legally and morally bound to resist the occupation since 1967. It's an obligation. But are there limits on the way in which they can resist? I, as I said in, this, in the um, statement that I put out after it, I said if war crimes were committed, I condemn them. But what about targeting civilians no, or abducting you, no, them? Course, no, of course. No, of course not. No, right. of course I don't condone that. But that is what Hamas did. <laughs> That's exactly what Hamas did. They targeted civilians. Yeah, you, he knows it. He knows it. He knows it. You can't pick the facts you like and say, I'm only going to go and emphasize these. And I'm just going to either ignore or lie about the other facts. So even if you thought Hamas has a right to, to resist and, and hence attack the Israeli soldiers that they attacked and killed, you certainly. He claims he, he he doesn't want them killing the civilians. Good, I'm happy to hear that. Um, but then for you to ignore the fact that they did kill the civilians, that's awfully convenient for your position. So nobody's angels here, and pretending that they're angels is absurd. But a lot of Hamas's fundamentalist Muslims, and you could say, hey, you know, after being occupied for 56 years, blah blah blah. I wouldn't make any excuse for them. But killing civilians is wrong, and did they do it? Yes, they definitely did it. So that doesn't justify the 10,000 innocent civilians that have been brutally killed by Israel in, in Gaza. And you're not helping, again, our cause in trying to protect, protect those civilians because you make our arguments easier to dismiss when you come in with outlandish ideas like false flag operation and no Israeli civilians were killed. That those, the fact that Israeli civilians were killed is an inconvenient fact for you, but it's still a fact. It is a fact and also this form of resistance has done what? It has led to the slaughter of at least 10,000 innocent civilians, 4,000 of whom happen to be children. How exactly was this a successful resistance? Yeah, and uh, there's no way to jump. By the way, there is no way to justify what Hamas did. Even if this led to some success, which obviously it didn't, you don't slaughter innocent people. Okay, and this notion that everyone in Israel, including the civilians, including Children are by default guilty because they're all considered settlers. No, we do not. I mean, I definitely don't subscribe to it. I don't think Jenks subscribes to it. Innocent civilians should not be targeted on either side. And what Hamas did led to, again, the worst possible situation for those Palestinian civilians in Gaza right now. So people making excuses for killing others is not helpful. Uh, so and because remember, everyone has an excuse. In their mind, they're right. You remember the terrorist who uh, actually has, unfortunately, the most successful terrorist probably in my lifetime, was an Israeli settler uh, who killed Yitzhak Rabin. Rabin was about to do a peace deal with uh, the Palestinians, and that could have actually alleviated this entire situation for decades on end. Right? Mm -hmm. It could have fixed everything. And uh, Yitzhak Rabin was an imperfect person. Uh, there's no question about that. And by the way, he committed terrorism before the state of Israel was created. But he was going to do a peace deal. And an Israeli radical fundamentalist murdered him and prevented the peace deal. So, and But for that guy, I guarantee you, he thought, oh, I'm doing God's work. I'm doing amazing, important work on behalf of my people. And I'm going to kill this guy so that I, because I am morally righteous. That's where you get into a lot of danger when people justify the killing of innocents when they think they are morally righteous. Almost never is that the case. And so, and none of this excuses what Israel has done in Gaza. And so, as we criticize Hamas very forcefully here, I criticize Israel just as forcefully for the slaughter that they have unleashed upon Gaza. Thanks for watching the video guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.